Yes, and we've heard advocates for sexual assault survivors call for an investigation and a King County Council member as well. Now a government watchdog group has submitted a formal request for the Justice Department or another outside independent investigation into the King County Prosecutor's Juvenile Division, based on my reporting, saying there is a precedent for it too. We're asking for an independent investigation of the allegation uh, and the case that, that you raised in your fine reporting. Jackson Maynard of the Citizen Action Defense Fund says a series of Como News reports prompted the filing. Something has to be done about it, and this is an important step uh, in, in trying to assure some accountability. This is good. There's only been like one, one before this that like we actually had a good scene and like, um, good suspect. That story highlighted the case of a 16-year-old girl who alleged she was raped by a stranger, another teenager, at a Seattle park in 2021. That the King County Prosecutor's Office did little to follow up on forensic evidence like cell phone data or fingerprints or DNA, a case amplified by the King County Sexual Assault Resource Center, which reports only 17% of sexual assault cases involving teenage suspects were charged in 2022. Isn't that a discouraging number to survivors, that you're only charging 17% of cases? Your question about is that discouraging? In some ways, I can suggest that that should be encouraging for us as a society. At the time, the juvenile division's chief deputy, Jimmy Hung, did not deny the numbers and welcomed a review. All of those cases that make up the data and the statistics that you're talking about, we welcome anybody to challenge any of those decisions. I hope. Um, for the safety of the, the people in this county that, um, that the U.S. Attorney's Office and the AG's Office do their jobs and take a closer look at what's going on here. Maynard claims public disclosures also reveal a four-year trend in filing rate declines and that there is precedent for a federal review. There have been other instances. He specifically cites the 2012 review by the Justice Department of the Missoula County Attorney's Office and how it then handled sexual assault cases and claims of gender bias. The feds reached an agreement with Missoula on reforms two years later. The elected King County Prosecutor Lisa Mannion has emailed King County Council members debating the interpretation of the charging decisions and welcoming a review, writing in particular that while her colleagues believe the victim in the 2021 case, we could not ethically file charges, and that most cases have been sent to the office as statutory referrals without a charging recommendation by police, but are reviewed as we do with each statutory referral. Even if what she's saying in the letter was true, um, it doesn't explain why they didn't look at the evidence on the juvenile cell phone. It doesn't explain why they didn't try to interview him. It doesn't explain why there weren't, you know, other efforts to try to um, collect, um, given the serious nature of the, the offense, evidence that, that could have um, allowed them to make the decision. Adds Maynard. It was the reporting of Como News that really... Um, made this come to a head this that prompted us to um, send the letter i was outraged frankly the state attorney general's office told me today it is reviewing the complaint and the u.s attorney's office in the western district of washington told me it has a robust civil rights practice and that all complaints will be handled appropriately chris statutory referral came up a couple times can you explain to us a little more about that yeah for people who don't follow this kind of charging decision on a regular basis this is where it can get confusing Mannion's note to the council members that we were sent today focuses on the idea that the departments are not sending filing recommendations on assault cases, which is what is referred to as a statutory referral, and that when you take that into the equation, the prosecutor's office says their filing rate is higher. But again, she notes that every statutory referral on a sexual assault is still reviewed by her office. Mm -hmm. Chris, we've talked a lot about diversion programs in King County, and then there is also that goal of closing the youth jail by the year 2025. Does that factor into this situation? Jackson Maynard says yes, and he writes about it in this formal complaint. He says that that has created a systemic issue within the juvenile division, emphasizing diversion over discipline. Now, it is difficult to track if a case is, say, reduced down from a more serious crime to make diversion an option, and if that is really happening. He cites a couple of emails in his complaint. The prosecutor's office counters by saying that it is not an option in any sort of sexual assault case. All right, Coma Senior Reporter Chris Daniels, thanks for the update. We know you'll continue to bring us all the latest developments in this.